How you all doing tonight? Yeah. Right. I'm going to dance with so hallelujah, bless God. Hallelujah. Your mercy endureth forever. 
all praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. You brought us a mighty long way and you still have us. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. One thing about it, you can't nobody do nothing about it. <laughs> Thank you, my Father. It was amazing and awesome day. Yeah. Yeah. It was a father that I can depend on. I can't depend on my own self most of the time. Yeah. But father, I can depend on you. Yeah. If you got it like that, you can trust him. And, and know you can trust him. Yeah. That's when it gets yeah. good to you. When you know yeah. you can trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God this night. Bless your holy and marvelous name. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Hallelujah. And awesome in all yeah. your ways. You are God and God all by yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everybody good today? Yeah. yeah. Family doing wonderful. Y'all look wonderful. Praise yeah. the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know you are. Yeah, thank you. Let's just pray. Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. Because this is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we're glad in it. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your joy. Your mercy, we thank you for your grace today. We thank you, Father, for the word, the living word. We thank you, Father, that you gave us a mass, loud power of a sound mind to absorb your word and then use your word and be a doer of your word. Father, I thank you for the word. It is so precious to me now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what is about to, what is taking place and what is about to take place. We just I just we just look be your first and lift up my family, Father, that they are here with me to hear the express word of God that you placed on my heart. I thank you that the Holy Spirit now is in control of this thing. And he, right now, he's, he's moving and he can move, have free course to move and do what he wants to do. So we just bless you and praise you for the family that's here. We thank you for those that are on the way. We just bless you that the angels are kept around about all of us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank you, Father. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, bless our pastor. He, he's not here tonight, but praise God, I know he's watching. So hello, pastor. <laughs> hello to our TV audience. We welcome you to IM at 6511 Belmont Road. And uh, just come on out and enjoy us. Enjoy, enjoy the service with us. We thank you. Just welcome, thank you and welcome you to the service tonight. Amen. Well, tonight is one of these nights that has been dear to my heart for a long time. And uh, praise the Lord. We're just going to get right on in, into it. Uh, okay. Everybody hold up the Bibles. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. Uh, this is my word of God. This is my word of God. It's the living word of God. It brings life to me. It brings life to me. And I do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. I can have what it says I can have. I can be what it says I can be. I can be what it says I can be. After I practice. After I practice. And spoken. Spoken. And the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm a doer of the word, so I know what I know what it does. I've had it, I have more, much, much experience with it. That it does do what it says. It does. Whatever you say out of this word, God is well able to bring it to pass. Uh, tonight is going to be a night of urgency. Uh, that's the title of the of the um, subject. Is more called it, uh, urgent last of the last days. Witness like never before. Witness like never before. We have children, we have cousins, we have loved ones, aunts and uncles, uncles and things that don't know the word or they, 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 they know the word and not doing the word because this is a day of urgency for children that love the Lord yeah. and do according to what the word says to do yeah. and live according to what, what the word it says to do. And we have many loved ones out there that is still out there like nothing is never going to happen. I don't understand how they're still doing that like they don't know because there's a lot there that we're dealing with that we have never had to deal with. Amen. We can't go and, and be around people and all this stuff floating around and, and, and nothing is the same anymore. It looks like everything has just started. It's going to start raveling at the, at the end and they, it's coming on in. And so it's time for us as believers not to leave anyone out. I believe now the ants stop. I'll give this to him. Just, just get it long enough. Yeah. 
because it's so serious now. This is a very serious time. So, um, and everybody look at the news, I guess, <laughs> and look at it a lot. It, it, it should do make you go pray a little bit more. And if you got loved ones, you know what it's talking about is now. I, I don't like the news that much. I get enough to know how to pray and know when I say know how to pray for our government and what's happening overseas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I watch it for that. And and that's about all I want to watch it with. Because if you pray with it too much, <laughs> you, you you might lose your joy. <laughs> all, right. all right. So um so we'll be like never before to the lost. Especially our family and friends, co-workers and and, and all the people that we around in our sphere of, of the world, what we, who we be around and whatnot. And John 3.16, we don't have to go there, but if you want to go to John 3.16, this is what God said about the lost. And we were once lost, so uh, he always, he always consider what you were before you became saved, before you accept Christ in your life. I mean, it, it was, I was a hot mess. I don't know anybody else, but anyway, praise God. <laughs> and I am so glad that I had this number when the person came to me and said, uh, well, actually, I was at RCC. And I went on up and gave my, 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 head, gave my head to Christ at the age of 12. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 The age of Christ. Yeah. See, people call that the mental ascent. I gave, them, I, gave them, I gave that to Christ at 12. In the church, and raised in the church. Yeah. But... You know, I was glad when that period was over so I could go back and do what I was doing at first. Because I had a grandmother, and I tell you, my, my grandmother didn't play with the Lord, and you gonna do what you're supposed to do, so anyway. <laughs> so um, I went on and got, got with the Lord's bench and said what they said, and I was a good girl, and praise God. And then after the next month was over and got some water, I was free to go. <laughs> I never went without a little wild person or nothing like that, but. It was a, and that's where it was coming in there, and I wasn't getting taught the word of God. So at the age of 35 is when I truly got born again. Yeah. And then from 35, the first day I got saved, and I think somewhere around the third, third or third or fourth day, things that I was doing, I was getting, feel like I was getting slapped on the hand about it and some of everything. And I knew then that I was saved. But within 25 days of being truly saved, I led 25 people to Christ. And I had never, ever led anybody from the age of, of 12 years old all the way up to the age of 35. I had never, I told people to come to church. I mean, you know, come go to church maybe as friends of mine, but it wasn't a part of my repertoire where people were supposed to say. So I, I just didn't never talk about Jesus. They didn't know if, if I was a stranger and the of a stranger. They didn't know I was even saved. Because I never said anything about the Lord, and it's really, I wasn't really. But anyway, um, so at age 35, I did, and my whole life changed. My whole life. And then I got re well, re baptized after I got born again. I got re baptized because then I was saved. I know what I was doing, I knew exactly uh, who the Lord was, and then I had to, of course, we had to grow from there. But praise God, that's my little thing. The tidbit of my story, my uh, testimony. All right, John three sixteen says it. For whosoever believeth in, praise God, hallelujah. John three sixteen. Can I write that? Let me know the Lord. So let's just go there. John three sixteen says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Mm -hmm. Now maybe, maybe somebody out there that wants to know the Lord, but they feel like they're not worthy. But God sent his only begotten son. That's how much he loved us. He loved all of us when we were sinners. Yeah. When we didn't want him or know nothing, we just was a, a hot mess going to hell. Let's put it that way. But he loved us. And all we have to do is one thing. Believe what he's told us and believe on his son and, and what he did on the cross. Shed his precious blood for us. What he did, confess with believe in your heart. Not the way I did the first time. Believe in your heart. Once you believe in your heart, it's a different thing. 
Because God, that God knows the heart from the head, so you can't fool him no way. He fool your own self all right. But all I can say is God loves us. So that those, those two scriptures, that you have everlasting life. You wouldn't have everything for the people that I was taught that when you only get the everlasting life when you die and go to heaven, that is not so according to the scriptures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. According to the scripture, you have once you confess Christ with your mouth, believe in your heart that God He's the Son of God and God raised him from the dead and that he died on the cross and shed his blood and asked for forgiveness, mm -hmm. then you have eternal life. Mm. Isn't that something? Amen. All you need to do is believe that. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And that's why he said, fight the good fight of faith. Because mm -hmm. it's not faith. Somebody comes and says, how do you know? It's not faith. But I can tell you some other things. And once you receive Christ, I can tell you this. You will know something happened to you. Mm -hmm. Because you won't be the same anymore. You won't be able to do what you used to do and, and feel good about it. You won't be able to go where you used to go and, and feel good about it. You were, it's just something in you saying, no, 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 no. You might not know a scripture, but once you can say, yes. I can guarantee you Amen. that you have a life that you didn't have at first. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That's all you have to do. Yes, sir. And then now I'm going into Mark um, 28, verse 19 and 20. Mark 28, not Mark, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. But this is something God told a main day for those that have received him. See, sometimes we get saved and, and uh, you, you don't apply yourself. You don't read for yourself. You, you have, you know, you're just out there doing what you want to do because nobody is, you know, kind of holding you accountable. But God does. We need to be out there just like you was miserable and you was walking, you was in darkness and all this. God wants us to tell other people about him. What we're doing is building the kingdom. Because see, that's what Jesus came for, to build the kingdom. Yeah. That's what he came for. He came and died for us, and he did all that he did so that we, his children, could go and tell other people, tell other people, a human being, about him and what he did. Yeah. Yeah. And when you go out and tell others that you love, and they see the change in you, now don't go and tell somebody that, uh, how much you love Jesus and you acting like a big, like, Right. You're doing the same thing they're doing. On, now, you can tell them, but they don't believe you too much because they see no change in you. Right. But when they see a change in your life, oh, yeah. that's when they say, hey, man, I used to hang with him. I used to be with her. I used to this and all that. Uh -uh. They were saying, uh, there's something to this thing because yeah. I know that person personally. Mm -hmm. So God gave us a mandate. And Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. This is one of the mandates God gave us. Uh, 28, 19, and 20. If anybody got it, go ahead and read it. Go therefore. Hallelujah. And make disciples of all the nations. Hallelujah. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Teaching them yes. to observe all things that <coughs> I have commanded you and lo. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. They want us to go. Not sit here. Not walk around. Not do what you do all the time. Instead, you buy somebody that you've been working with for a while and they can get to whoever. I've, I've had the privilege this week of meeting three people to Christ. Mm. And I'm praying for because I'm praying for God to continuously to give me their heart burning desire. I used to do it all the time, but then I cooled off. I said, Father, I need that back. And Lord, I just thank God in the morning for the for going out and asking to ask to prepare people heart for me and, and, and people that I thought were saved. I, I, I talked to a young lady yesterday and I've been doing her hair for a long time. They talk about the church, they talk about this, but I got an opportunity to talk to her one-on-one -on -one yesterday. And I asked her a question. She said, I don't know. Why is that so? Goodness. I mean, that hurts because if she had died before yesterday, and uh, it, 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 but I put all of my prayer list, I pray for them, and I see them, I, and we, we, we know, I talk to them about the things of God and what not and what needs to be done, and I, and I give them assignments. Each person I lead to Christ, I give them assignments. Because that's what's missing when you lead a person to Christ. 
Come with something in the Bible. I always go to John chapter 1, verse 1 through 21. So 21 days. And uh, some do, some don't. But I, I, I continue to pray for it. So in, in Mark 16, go to Mark 16, 15 and 16. Mark, Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. It's another thing. You can't say that God didn't put it on one page. I'll show you two pages. God told you to do that. Mark chapter 16. Okay, uh, 16, 16, 15 says, 15 and 16, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye unto all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized. Now that baptism, not talking about water baptism, that's where a lot of preachers got to get, to get upset. Yeah. That's not what they're talking about. When you first ask Christ to come into your life, the Holy Spirit does that baptism. Yeah. And that's why he's in there. When you once you say he comes in. Now this is a different thing than being filled with the, with, the, with the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit, you do have the Holy Spirit to help you do things and, and he's your comforter and he seals you and all. So this baptism is not talking about water baptism. A lot of ministers think that he's talking about water baptism. You need to fulfill all righteousness when you go into the water and be baptized. But that's not what saves you. What saved you is actually believing on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. That what saved you. So I, I had to put that out there because for a long time I thought that water, I ever baptized, I see in the Bible. <laughs> water baptism. Uh, that, that he that should believe, believe and is baptized shall be saved. But that believeth not shall be damned. That means that you don't believe somewhere along the line that Jesus Christ did what he did for you and loved you and continued to love you and do what needs to be done. You, you're damned. That means that you die. And I am, I'm not afraid to use the word. Go to hell. Okay. Because a lot of people are afraid to use those words, those terms. And well, it's in the Bible. God don't want nobody there. He don't want, he created the, the, the uh, Adam and Eve, and from them all of us came forth as human beings, and God created us in his, like his, in his image. He don't want us to go there. But I tell you one thing, you mess around and act like you don't know after he sent Many, 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 many people yeah. to you, yeah. Amen. telling you about Jesus. Come on. So if you should die and miss the mark and go to hell, don't say Jesus sent you there. No, he didn't. Had nothing to do with it. You sent yourself. He didn't make hell for us. He made hell for Satan and his demons and, demon and angels that fell with him. That's who he made hell for. He didn't make it for us. I just, I'm just at this point, I just want to be straightforward with people because a lot of people is, is, is getting too much sugar and candy. Yeah. They not getting right. enough broccoli. Mm. All that. <laughs> 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 Those are the, these are the last days said. Jesus told us what will be happening in the earth in the last of the last days. Because see, we are not in the last days. We're in the last of the last days. And if you don't understand that, you, uh, I want I want you to go, that, that's it. I want you to understand. In love, I want you to understand all this stuff is happening. And even a person that don't know nothing about Christ will tell you something is going on. Yeah. It's just, I don't feel, it's something, something not right. I don't feel right. No, it's, it's because we're not in the same place. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 through 8. Matthew 24, 4 through 8, if that's in that book. If you don't remember, I'm just going to use it. I'm just going to use it. Because I'm going, after that, I'm going to um, Luke. I think it's Luke. Yeah, just, just you go that way. Yeah, Matthew. No, yeah, you're not going to Mark 16. I got it up there. I'm sorry. Yes, Matthew 24, 4 through 8. Okay? Matthew 24, 4 through 8. And it says, And Jesus answered, and said unto them, and talked to his disciples, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right now, we're in a lot of the past, I've heard minister last week, deception. We got so much deception out here, uh, it just, it just makes me want to grit my teeth. Because a lot of God's people are not paying attention to this. We paying attention to everything else, the news and our buddies and the doctors and the lawyers and the Indian players and, and anybody else. We 
paying attention. He was paying attention to them. But what they're not paying attention to is what he said. Yeah. And see, he has the last word. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if he said it, it go, it's coming to pass. Right. Mm -hmm. I've lived long enough to know that when he says something, you can try it your way if you want to. Mm -hmm. Keep going back to what he said if you want to get straight. Mm -hmm. So I'm going back to this. He said, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations, nations mean people, shall rise against nations. They fight their way. And kingdom against kingdoms. And there shall be famine, that means hunger, and pestilence, and this is what we're going through probably now with the, with the coronavirus thing, and earthquakes and diverse places. All of these things are the beginning of sorrows. Mm -hmm. And that sorrow means that birth pain. See, they, I, got, I got some, uh, I, got, I wrote down some stats too, like look up some stats of that. Uh, the difference between 1900 until now of earthquakes and famine and cyclones and, and hurricanes and fires and, mm -hmm. and I mean floods and all of this all this stuff that happened and it happened on a constant basis. Mm -hmm. Right now I know one day one earthquake overseas, water's everywhere. It don't show all of the nation on our TV, it only show what happened to us. But it's happening all over the world as we are speaking. Yeah. That's a good praise in life. People going through. Jesus told us, but so these things right there, right here, is coming to pass already. At the birth pain, everybody, every woman that has a child know what I'm talking yeah. about. And when you first start having pain, that baby ain't nowhere near. You may go to the hospital three times and just send you back home until you get to that, get to that time where the baby is about ready to come. And what makes it so cool? You can't tell it, you can't hurry it up, and you can't even throw it down. <laughs> so you can wait, you in trouble. <laughs> as far as the mother is concerned. She can't say you will stop this now because I got to go somewhere else. But you can stay every morning until you can come in and get ready. But that the doctor refer this subject as far as him coming, Jesus said. It's like birth pain. Nobody, some Bible said birth pain, some say sorrows. But I'm telling you, it, it's right. So this is about the natural events that I just named. Yeah. Then if you go to Timothy, yeah, if you go to Timothy chapter 3. Start at verse 1, Timothy 3, 1. Chapter 3, verse 1. Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. First Timothy. First Timothy. I'm sorry, that was me. First Timothy chapter 3. This one here, I know a lot of people got situations going on. The kids, they listen to other children. And look at that. Even your child tell the other children how it's going. I tell you, now listen to this. This is chapter 3. This is what God said about what the name is going to be doing. Matthew, I realized that they was talking about the earth and what happened with the hurricanes and the tornadoes. And those things were increased. But now this is what name is doing. This, this said, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, I had a young lady tell me, uh, I was saying about the, about the rapture, or catching up, whatever you want to call it. And she said, oh, oh, they've been saying that ever since I've been born. I said, you better be glad. I said, God, God, God uh, 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 you don't want nobody to perish. Mm -hmm. I said, first Peter, second Peter tells you that he don't want nobody to perish. So he, to him, it's not a long time. Mm -hmm. To us, it's a long time. But we live in time. I said, but don't you know God said in this word that a one day is a, uh, is a thousand, or one day to God. One day to God is a thousand years to us. So God, is, Jesus ain't been gone for two days. <laughs> <laughs> he been gone for two days. But now because we live in time, we think it's a whole bunch of time, but no, it's not. Jesus been gone two days. That's all long he been gone. So it, it's amazing. But he said, uh, 
Oh, my boasters, proud, blasphemers. No, I see some proud people. That's a peacock boy, I said. Disobedient to parents, unfaithful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Now, how many know that if, you, if you've been around in a crowd anywhere and you said something about Jesus or you said something about any other, any other bunch of people that you know is wrong, how many of you know that you get the, you can get the hammer quick? That's right. Not only that outside, don't think it's just outside. Try your younger generation and say something like that in front of them. Now, I got a younger generation. They, me, we just, we just got to go in there and get stuff. I got to come in. I said, now, if you, if, you really, if you really want to fuss with somebody, you fuss with God. I don't know. Well, no, just shut your mouth. Then. I mean, I'm going to go back and shut your mouth. Because you don't know what you're talking about. But that, that's me, y'all. Don't y'all try that. But I don't know how y'all people are. Uh, traitors. You can't tell people nothing. You can't trust people with your deepest secret these days. Because if you do, you might hear it down on the corner the next day. That's a good place you might. Heart. High man, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. Now, man, I know y'all like football. I know y'all like football. But you know what? That, when, that's, when I look over, when I do have to, my, my husband look at football, when I do have to look at that stadium and see that stadium jam packed, they ain't scared of ass then. They out there look like a bunch of people out there, boy, you can't, I mean, it's just jam packed with no masks. But if you don't come to church, they mask all up all the way, I'm all the way away. But in church, you're supposed to be able to trust God. You know that. You're able to trust God. There's nothing wrong with masks, but that's what we're supposed to be according to the law and what's going on. But what I'm saying is, millions and thousands look like millions of people. It's in the stadium. I don't know how many of out of that bunch, I, I, I almost said at least 45% of them don't know nothing about God. And let's put it this way. If they do know, they out there are told they go to see God. Let's put it this way. So lovers of themselves. Have a form of godliness. Denying the power thereof. From which, from such, God said, turn away. Amen. Turn away. So did y'all hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Everybody in here know at least three of these things that people are doing, doing or we doing, or however you want to do it. Everybody. It's time to, time to stop. Uh, so that, that, so that's, that's the way man is acting these days. So really, you can't, you can't, uh, you, you know, you, you better ask God, pray and ask God who you can confide in beside him. Because if you don't, you might get in trouble. Some statistics, I looked up some statistics from 1960. These were, there was only 39 natural disasters in 1960. Earth came. Year from 2000 to, 20, uh, to, to 2020, last year, there was 416 natural disasters. I mean, thousands of people getting killed all over the world. Thousands of people out of their homes and fires and all that kind of stuff. Just, just 2021 here in America alone, there was 10 disasters in one day. That's amazing. And I'm saying, good gracious and mighty, the birth pains is, is here. I mean, it's at the end now. I got that from holifyfy.com, H-O-L-I-V-I-F-Y.com, visionsofhumanity.org, and statistics.com. So I got that from. All right. Uh, we'll get that. Now, um, in, first, in Luke 21, 6, 21, verse, uh, verse 21, verse, Luke chapter 21, verse 36. And I'm going to read that out of Amplified. Luke 21, verse 36. We're still talking about the disaster, what happened. Verse 36. Now the amplified 
In 20, June 21, 36, it is, um, this is what Jesus said, I choose to believe the Bible. There are people, I'm going to read, let's read, I'm going to read, read the verse first. It says, keep awake then, that, that, I want 35, for it will come upon all who live upon the face of the entire earth. Keep awake. Then and watch at all times. Be discreet, attentive, and ready, praying that you may have the full strength and ability and be accounted worthy to escape all these things taken together that will take that will take place and to stand in the and to stand in the presence of of the Son of Man. Now in the day that Jesus is going to talk about something else. But what God is saying, be alert, be watchful, be mindful, be discreet in what you do. In other words, do what he says in the word. If you do that, you won't miss it. He said, keep my commandments. Oh, all those that love me, keep my commandments. That's how you're going to be loved him, yeah. by keeping his commandments. And once we keep his commandments, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do and what not to do. Okay. Praise God. But he said, count yourself worthy to stand. Yeah. Now, there are people that believe that the, that the post-millennium, the, the first, the second, and the third. <laughs> Put it that way. And there are people that think we go, his, his children will be here during the Great Tribulation. And whoever thinks that, Jesus is telling you, you're going, to, you're going to escape. If Jesus say you're going to escape, you're going to escape. I know they're getting some things mixed up because there's one, I, I don't get that. Anyway, praise God. So always know that those that love the Lord and have uh, accepted him as the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you might have to do some tuning up and some tweaking. Yeah. But get that done. I'm here tonight to bag all those bad people to get it done. To get that done. Read your word. Don't let nobody else just, don't let, the, the preacher do what he does, and that's who you're supposed to listen to beside the Holy Spirit. But let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you, because if you do, you won't miss it. But those that are left behind, thinking that they're saved and they're having some challenges, with that, get that straight. You don't want to be left here. You don't want to be left here. So, uh, that, that, that was about, that's what that was about, to count yourself worthy to escape. Escape means you've accepted Jesus Christ, you're doing what he said you're going to do, you're part of the, the you are not the ten virgins. There are ten virgins that the devil God told, showed me not to go by the Lord about what's happening there. And that it's a, it, it's a trick, it's the, um, the rapture. Five was left, but they had no oil in their lamp. And five went with the, they went in with the, with the bridegroom and shut the door was shut, and then he left. So that was the story on that. Let me kind of move on here. This is what Jesus said. That I chose. I chose to believe the Bible. If you read anybody in here, ever know where the story is? Uh, the story of Lot in Genesis. You know what happened to Lot? Out of all them people in Sodom and Gomorrah, Jews that talked to Abraham and Abraham prayed and God spared Lot and his wife and two daughters. Out of two towns, that's all was like Sodom. And Gamora. Gamora was another town. And he destroyed all of them. And, I, and so they escaped and went to Lot, 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 or whatever they called it, what the town they went to. And Jesus they didn't do anything until he got out because he was he was a backslidden Christian, but he was still a Christian. Yeah. Okay? That's all. And the next one was Noah. It is the story of Noah. If you haven't read that uh, about Lot, please read it. It's in the book, it's in Genesis. You understand what I'm Now, Noah was in the eighth chapter of Genesis. Out of all of the people, four but eight people saved. Now, how did that come about? Well, he's showing us two things. God said, He won't leave his children in nothing like this because he loved them. So,
So he uh, took about 120 years to build, I call we call it the boat, the little music ship. But it, it took him 120 years, and all that time he was ministering to the people in his town. But they saw fit to, to, to ridicule him and, and call him names and, and talk to him, talk about him all kinds of ways. But when God, when the time, when the time it was fulfilled, and the, and the boat was ready, he went in, God told him what to do with the animals and everything else. And he got, and when he went in, God shut the door. Mm -hmm. No one didn't shut the door, no one didn't shut the door. God shut the door. And then all when the, after he stopped, the rain started, because it never rained before. Yeah. Jesus ain't never came other than, I mean, he never came down since he's been in heaven. He came there. So we really ain't expecting him. But he's telling you, I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming. Yeah. And so we, we just like the, uh, the people didn't expect it with, 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 with uh, Noah, God shut the door and the rain stopped. 1,500 cubits of rain hit the earth. And all of the, 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 the rapers and everything under the ocean, everywhere that water, God tore everything. Drowned everything that had breath in the nostrils. And then you breathe it out. He drowned everything. And left eight people. Of eight. And so, now, we don't want that. <laughs> And then now we're talking about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. It talks about, anybody that's not familiar with it, but the time I'm just going to run through this thing. All right, anyway, uh, chapter, uh, uh, let's go to 1 Thessalonians. If anybody don't know where it is, it's, uh, let's see. I'm not going to read that at this point. Thessalonians, I'm not going to tell you where it is, but it's right. First Thessalonians, that first Thessalonians, and right behind, right behind Colossians. First Thessalonians, and I'm not going to take much time because I'll have to, to kind of hurry here. So I can do all the time here. First Thessalonians says, chapter 4, verse 13. And it says, This is what God is saying to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, all those that. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother. Concerning them which are asleep. Those people that, that when they say asleep, that means they people that have accepted Christ, they're dead at any rank. Okay? So he would not have any of those those asleep that he sorrow not, even as others, people that don't know don't know this, which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. I explained that one time. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven which he ate with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive, as we sit in here now, and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. He did not say anything about coming to earth at this point. So this is the gathering or catching away. You won't see rapture, but the word rapture means catching away or catching whatever. But uh, you won't see that in the Bible, but you talk to see catching away. And, uh, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. words. Yeah. And then God said that if we don't sorrow. My mother been dead for a while now. She was 58 when she passed, and I was 38. And I didn't sorrow that nobody had no hope. It was so, my brother took it so hard. He got mad with me because I wasn't crying. I said, baby, you, you don't understand. I said, I know I see my mother again. And inscribed on her tombstone that I had put on there. Here lies her earthly body. But her spirit and her soul is in heaven with the Lord. Right. That's what I put on her tombstone. Right. And I finally talked to her a little bit and he kind of understood that uh, from, from what I told him. But all I know is anybody that's not ready, get ready. Amen. Now, uh, so that's, what, that's talking about the rapture. That's talking about the first group. Don't be left behind. Make sure you go in the first group. And God said, the more, this more
more than ever is the time for us to be wise. He said, in one prayer, he said, be wise as, uh, wise as, harmless as a dove and wise as a serpent. But this right here is talking about souls. In Proverbs 11 30, when you share, they're talking about be wise, win souls. We need to win the souls because that's God's hot button. That's the command he gave us. Go into all the world and, and, and preach the gospel and you read the scripture. Go into that. Do what you need to do. I don't know how this is. Just say what you would. I, I gave my testimony at the first, when I first got up here. You know what you did. Yeah. Just tell them what you did. Didn't learn Romans 10, 9, 10. I don't know what all but here is. Let's just put the Bible together. I can find, I guess I can find Romans. I just got to say it. So, okay. Proverbs. When you share the good news of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, others leading with others, leading them to, to the saving knowledge of Christ, then ask them a question. After you share it, after you share good news, you want to, you want not to usurp their your authority, their, their authority. Ask them if they're, if they're ready to receive Christ, and would they like to be half more salvation? And if you do that, they will tell you one blood or uh, one man. So I read it right now. I scared. I said, "Oh, we gonna pray for you afterwards." But anyway, but some people said mm, they, 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 you know, they count. Yeah. They don't want to know. Some of them look at you like you're crazy. Some of them look at you. You didn't reject me. You rejected. That's right. That's right. So anyway, so they ask that question, and if they have yes, then pray with them. For then pray with them. To ask Jesus Christ into their lives and, and, and to their into their into their hearts. Into their hearts. And Romans 10, 9, and 10 is where you can find some information on how that goes. And so anyway, we, we talked about the rapture and probably the heaven. I think I put something in for that one. But anyway, uh, so that's what that's what the, the lesson is all about tonight today. It's urgent. That we as Christians move. We support people that is going out. We go out and we talk to we, we, we are strangers. Some people like to talk to strangers. But after you become familiar with somebody, then uh, you, you know what? You just ask them. Do you, you ever set Christ into your life? Or would you know, would you want to know Jesus? Or however you got the Holy Spirit, pray first. Ask the Holy Spirit to talk to that, talk that person off. Pray first. Pray for us to get you the boldness to go get a gun. Because this is, even though you talk to people, you talk to people all the time. This, this, when that faith gonna come right at you, you don't know when I say this and I say when that voice come out, you say, hmm, I'm gonna do it anyway. But I'm gonna tell you, win the lost, win the young, young ones, win your little nephews and, and, and nieces that out there that don't know. But we do not want them left behind. We do not want them. I'm studying in Revelation. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm in the, I'm chapter 9 and I'm teaching in Revelation. And let me tell you, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a book that uh, that you're going you to take lightly once you get it started, discipling the symbols and what God's saying in other books. This is a book that God said. Bless the one, the reader of the book of Revelation. Right. <laughs> and if you go ahead then and then read the book of Revelation, you probably say, like I said, who in the world is all these monsters coming about to see? But anyway, we're not talking about that. <laughs> we're not talking about that. So that is the end of what I have to say tonight. I hope everybody, and then also our audience, uh, I hope everybody got uh, a gist, an urgency. It's not that the God is not going to pour these things out. But if you go, he'll be with you. Yeah. And if you ask, he will give you the people with a tender heart that will want to know at least talk to you. Yeah. And you're going to run across those ones that, you, you know, you're going to talk to the dog, you know, they didn't make us yet. But anyway, they ain't nothing that never happened to you before. But uh, give God the praise. Amen. Thank you for the listening. And I hope you love you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I thank God for that word. Yeah. Glory. Urgency. Yeah. 
You know, one thing I've learned is seasons don't last forever. Season come and season go. So if you know the season we're living in, if we don't get the harvest in during the season, we lose the harvest. We lose it. So because there's an urgency, the time we're living in, and uh, we all know the time we're living in. The scripture said, these are perilous times, yes. difficult times, hard times, and dangerous times we're yes. living in. Yes. So don't turn away, uh, don't turn a deaf ear to what you hear. Take heed. Yes. Amen? Yes. And we thank God for that word urgency. It, it should spark uh, something on the inside of us knowing, saying that Look, the scripture said, go you, therefore. That means God died for the whole, Jesus died for the whole world. But he had called us to go into the whole world and preach the gospel. If you need boldness, ask God to give you the boldness that you need. If you need wisdom, if you lack wisdom, ask God to give you wisdom. Ability to speak a word in season to those who are in need. And God will meet you there. He said, Lo, I'm with you, even to the end of the world. Amen. The Lord shall be thy confidence. The Lord is our confidence. We have no confidence in ourselves, in our flesh. Our confidence is in the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, she also spoke about leading people to Christ. He who wins souls is wise. And we all need to know how to win souls to Christ. You know, sometimes we, you may have to let people read it for themselves, how they get saved. You turn to uh, Romans 10, 9 and 10. He said, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, I, I, I have also shared the word with different people who didn't know Christ. And I had the opportunity to let them read it for themselves. And they never knew it was in the Bible. Romans 10, 13 said, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. They never heard of that. But when you let them read it for themselves, and they may ask you, how do I do that? Just ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins and ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Ask him to come into your heart. Amen. You know, it's very simple. We don't, sometimes we complicate things. But we don't need to complicate things anymore. I don't know about you, but when I was in the world, I didn't understand none of this. If someone that came to ask me, was I, am I saved? I said, saved from what? <laughs> yeah, I'm saved from what? Especially when you don't think you're a sinner. You think you all right. You pretty good. You know, you ain't bad as that guy down the street. You don't curse. You don't lie. You go to church. You give your dollar. We did all these things. And we thought we was all right because, hey, I went to church on Sunday. Because I was told to go. From a child is the right thing to do. But it don't save you just going to church. But church is a good place to be because we it's a place where we can learn. And we might be convicted. This is where the Spirit of God can convict you. And you'll be willing to turn from your ways. And that's what it's all about, turning from our wicked ways. Amen. So, most, of the, most of us didn't think we had wicked ways. But we do. 
because we were all sinners. There's none righteous, no, not one. Jesus died for the whole world. And if you're there today, you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Say this prayer with me. Ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the Lord of your life. Close your eyes. Just say this prayer. Say, Father, I'm a sinner. Forgive me and cleanse me by the blood of Jesus Christ. Said, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord, and I make you my Savior. And I said, thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me the Son. I'm saved now. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you say that prayer, then you're saved. The scripture said, it's by grace you're saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Least any man should boast. Only thing we have to boast about is what Jesus did. We boast about the Lord. How great he is. How awesome he is. How good he is. Oh, hallelujah. He's a blessed God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. So we get thank you. So we come to the end of our service tonight. And we just thank God for each and every one of you here tonight. Take to heart the message that you have heard and act upon it. Be bold. Be, because this is an urgent time we live in. Amen. We got loved ones right there. We got friends, family, neighbors, all around about it's harvest. Be bold enough to go out into the harvest. And God will be with you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.